keep going back to what I say every week when we talk about Tiger. Every episode when, when he comes up, he, that guy is done. Mm-hmm. He's done. He has as many rounds this year in the 80s as he does in the 60s. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And what are people hanging on to here? I mean, they keep expecting a comeback, but, you know. Listen. It's not happening. There's uh, two things that need to happen here. Uh, number one is he needs to pick up his phone, go to his contacts, go to the B section, and uh, dial up Butch Harmon. Okay. Number one. Yeah, I don't think Butch would want to talk to him. He Perhaps he wouldn't, but business is business, right? Yeah, I guess so. Tiger's got enough money the, to probably coax Butch into uh, helping him out. Especially if he's contrite. Number two is I truly believe there's something influencing Tiger Woods and I would say some type of... uh, Mental issue? No, I would say it's... uh, I think he's hooked on pain pills. Oh, really? Yeah. That's That's a bold prediction. Yeah, well, you heard it here first. You really did. I haven't heard that anywhere yet. Tiger Woods potentially... Hooked on pain pills. Why do you I say? Think, why do you think that? Well, if you look at uh, some of the shots he's hitting that you would normally expect from a twenty-plus handicapper, um, his his it looks like it's in slow motion. His reactions are in slow motion. It just doesn't. It it it. You know, the only thing that comes to mind is oxycotton or, you know, <laughs> I'm 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 being honest. No, it, hey, it, yeah, I, he, I mean we've seen it with athletes before, right? Yeah. Poor performance based on, you know, pain relieving type substances. Well, he's had so, plenty of injuries. It's been oh, well yeah. documented. Um, which is one of the things I say is, has there ever been a golfer who has as many injuries as Tiger Woods? Right. And is it just a coincidence or is Tiger using some of these injuries as excuses? Does he have a low tolerance for pain? Mm. I mean, I seem to remember the guy winning a, a U.S. Open on a supposedly broken leg. Remember that? Yeah. And now, at the post-game press conference, he blames his 85 on a blister. <laughs> Listen, some of the chips, if you look at um, the hole, I think it was 18, where he hit some of those those pitch shots or chips. or I mean, once you hit the first one, you're guaranteed, you got to guarantee yourself that it just doesn't happen at that level of play from someone like Tiger Woods to hit a second shot after he hit the first one so poorly. So I think there's something going on there besides, uh, you know, the yips or it just doesn't happen at that level of play, especially from Tiger Woods. So I think he's being influenced by some type of narcotic or, and it, and, and I, you know, I don't think it's uh, he's a well. He probably is addicted to it, but I think there's some kind of pain reliever. Okay, issue so just there. full disclosure, Bob. This is just uh, based on what you observe watching him play. You don't have any inside information. No, this is I pure have no speculation. Informi- it's pure speculation. I think he's, I think he's relieving some pain with some some type of narcotic that is influencing his play. Oh, well, that's interesting. That, that's a take I hadn't heard. That's the type of uh, insight you get at the Finger Lakes Golfer Podcast yeah, that you absolutely. might not get at the Golf Channel. No, you heard it here first, Jim. Right. I did. I really did. Um, you know, I, I personally think that this string of golf coaches he's gone through is – can't be helping him. I mean, he started out with Butch Harmon, Hank Keeney, both renowned, established former players. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, they moves on to guys like Sean Foley and Chris Como, who are kind of like on the fringe of what you'd accept as a, yeah. you know, mainstream type of instructor. But these guys, uh, he calls them swing consultants now. So Yeah, but that's he, probably for tax purposes. Well, okay, maybe. <laughs> but you know what I think it is? Is he has in his mind how he wants to hit the ball and how he wants to swing, and these guys are here to uh, make him feel good about himself. It's working. You know, <laughs> not really. 85. What he, what he needs to do is uh, listen to the people that are trying to teach him. You know, you know, he needs to get out and play. He needs to get rid of these swing coaches. Get out and play. Right? Yeah. Uh, it's just, it's also just not one part of his game. It seems to be oh, everything. Yeah. You know, his short game was back to how it was at the Phoenix Open uh, or San Diego when he couldn't, you know, even 
um, get a chip on the green because he was hitting them fat. Yeah, that doesn't that shouldn't happen at his level. It shouldn't unless you're, he's been doing you're that since he was six. Painkillers, right? Well, <laughs> I I really think there's something. There has to be a major influence on what he's trying to do on the course that you can't you can't contribute it. I mean, he's been doing that since he's been a young child. Yeah, but I, I, I mean, I'm not. I disagree in that there might be something like that contributing to it. But I really just think it got to a point where Tiger's whole world was blown up, and he never could, from that point, regain the confidence in, especially his putting, but the overall confidence that he had. And next, when he came, returned to the game after, you know, the domestic incident where, mm-hmm. where he took some time off, he came back to a game that was. You know, chock full of great young talent that weren't scared of Tiger Woods anymore, and I don't think Tiger can operate. He never has had to operate in a world where everybody wasn't scared of him. Yeah, but given all that, given everything you said, which I agree with, you still should be able to chip. You'd think, but when you lose your confidence. Yeah, everything you know, he's not as confident as with a putter. Now he's tr- worried about getting that chip shot close enough so he doesn't have to face a putt that normally he wouldn't have, you know, thought twice about. And yes, there's been times when Tiger has gone out and he's had it just clicking in, during this stretch. He had a good round at Augusta. Um, you know, he shot in the 60s twice, mm-hmm. but so yeah, he can still shoot the types of scores that you need to win, but he can't do it consistently. Those are just day. Those are the days when he came out and was just feeling good. Every other day, when he's not feeling, you know, like he got his A plus game, the confidence isn't there, and he just, uh, you know, can't put it together. He, yeah. can't, he can't put together any consistency. And so, um, before we get off of Tiger Woods, you give him a shot at the U.S. Open at Chambers no, Bay. No, no way. Yeah, I don't. You know, either. I personally, I think he should stay home, enjoy himself, watch it on the big <laughs> screen. 